Millions of spectators have walked the hallowed grounds located at 63rd and Shirley Street since its original purchase in 1919. Their interests were varied, but they shared a common notion that they owned a piece of the 200 acres. And the Knights of Exarban Foundation, the original owner of the facility, wanted it that way. Whether you were a card-carrying member or an owner of Exarban Exposition Company stock, Exarban Field was meant to be shared as part of the Foundation's mission to build a more prosperous heartland where communities can flourish and every child can succeed. Over the years, entertainment, education, and recognition events were celebrated on the grounds and throughout the region, thanks to the proceeds generated. During World War II, it even served as a military headquarters. Please join us in taking a look back over the years. The vibrant colors of racing silks and the thrill of the starting bell are what many remember best. The original track, built in 1921, gave birth to a landmark that served the Midwest well until its closing in 1996. Many of the great horses and jockeys graced the track at Exarban. We remember the famous horse, Omaha, who won the Triple Crown and is buried on its grounds, and the famous jockey, Willie Shoemaker, who raced here in 1985. For generations of 4-H families, the annual trip to the Exarban Livestock Show was a family vacation. The world's largest competition of its kind had educated thousands of 4-H youth from an eight-state region in character-building values that have taken many of them into leadership roles such as National Secretary of Agriculture or House of Representatives. Friendships, business partnerships, and even marriages have begun in the livestock barns, and the importance of spending time together as a family is evident still today. For 55 years, the PRCA-sanctioned event has been drawing top cowboys to the Exarban Rodeo. Voted one of the top five indoor rodeos in 2001, the event is still a draw. Our hats are off to the countless families who are still original seat holders. Like them, you may remember the antics of Roy Rogers and Dale Evans or the Oak Ridge Boys and Gene Autry. One thing is for certain, the heart-stopping chill of an eight-second ride is alive and well in Omaha. Once a year, the facility was transformed into the kingdom of Quivira, and hundreds of families were honored for their civic and philanthropic efforts. Who can forget the joy on the faces of the pages as they have skipped down the runway, or the ahs of the crowd at the unveiling of the new monarchs? However, the fondest memories carried in the minds of thousands of members were the membership shows. Exarban had them all. Family shows, ice shows, big bands, comedy, and music of all kinds. Before entertainment became so readily available, your membership was the ticket to the stars. And they all performed here. Liberace, Wayne Newton, Lawrence Welk, Bob Hope, Mitzi Gaynor, George Strait, Bill Cosby, the Statler Brothers, Sammy Davis Jr., Frank Sinatra, and George Burns, just to name a few. And who can forget the grand time spent in other events like hockey, from the Knights to the Lancers, curling, ice skating, the Douglas County Fair, River City Roundup, graduations, parties, and civic events. The Exarban Grounds grew up with Nebraska, Omaha, and its generations of fans. It served us well, and we are grateful for the fond memories that will live in the hearts of all of us. Many of its core events have found a new home in the new convention center and arena in downtown Omaha. And so we say farewell to the historic Exarban Grounds. Thanks for the memories. And we invite you to help us write the next chapter of River City Roundup Fair and Festival by creating exciting new memories in our new world-class homes.